following program is intended for mature audiences. The time is now for the hardest hit, yet completely trivial, football show on the planet. You are in rarefied territory. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well to the broken helmet. Let's rock. Hey, coming to you live on tape on this Thursday, October 13th, 2022. Week 6 action in effect as we pass the quarter post 2.0. Obviously, the extra game on the schedule gives us a second quarter post. But now, that for sure is in the rearview mirror. So, Christopher, what else can we say about the first part of the season. We talked a little bit about last week, but I mean, shit teams. And after we were done talking about them in week five, I think you just saw that brought to light even more. I mean, there are... Just... Oh, I thought you were... Go ahead. <laughs> I thought you were going to say preseason's over. Yeah, Pre- well... well uh, we're, we're through the preseason. I don't know. I, I don't... Well, fuck you. Yes, we are through the preseason. God damn it. You're right. We are through the preseason. Preseason, that guy. But I don't know if it's necessarily help because I, watching these games, I don't care what anybody else says, I, I, and I know that football season, everybody loves to clap and applaud and say how great the NFL is, and every podcast you hear does the Mike Francesa, I can't believe it's going past so fast now. It's, uh, it's already week six. It just doesn't stop once it starts. It just keeps going and going and going, and it goes by so fast. And I'm, I'm going to say this next year, too, at the same time. I'll probably say it three weeks from now at the same time. And uh, wouldn't you know it, every other fucking podcast in the world will be saying the same shit. I can't believe it's so fast. And I went back and listened to our fucking podcast, and I do that same fucking shit. I said the same thing. I did the Mike Francesa. Let me just say how fast the season's going. Uh, so, anyway... But yes, yeah, preseason's yeah, done. Yeah, I mean, season's going by yeah. fast. But I don't care what anybody says. Football has sucked this year, flat out. The league is not good. It's what? Not. What are you talking about? The league is not good. I am sorry. It, it the N- right. the quality right. of NFL right. football right. Right. this year blows big fat donkey d. Okay, all right. So rather than just say football sucks. Why don't you give me two or three examples of why football sucks? And what's better? What was better? What 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 in your mind? And don't say 90s football or some shit. No, like, no, no, no. Give I, me I, some No, don't get me wrong. I you know, I, I'm not I'm not touting, I'm not sitting here get off my lawn. I'm saying that this year, specifically this year, has not been good. And it, it just shows by look. Look at the teams. We we did this last week, but do it again. I mean, it's Baltimore, KC, Philadelphia, and Buffalo. And who else do you want to throw in that mix? The 49ers. Fine, 49ers. Okay. I, I mean, with Jimmy G, now they're all banged up, and I mean, they look okay one minute, they look terrible the next. Who else? Vikings. They're five and one, four and one. Uh, they are five and uh, they are f- whatever four and one. Their defense is atrocious. DVOA twenty six. You're never going to win that way. I picked okay, them. Well, Kansas versus- City's Kansas City's defense is horrible. Kansas City's is fourteenth DVOA. Minnesota's is twenty sixth. Uh, so uh, Minnesota's K- Kansas also City ter- Minnesota's also that. awful on the road. Awesome at home, terrible on the road. Kirk Cousins is an interception waiting to happen. But all right, so San Francisco, then Minnesota. So those right now are the top six teams in a league of 32 teams. We're throwing Minnesota in the top six of 32 teams. Who else do you want to go? But how many how throw many in Tampa you want? Bay? You want to throw in Tampa Bay too? Tampa, sure. Bay, Tampa Bay is awful. Tampa Bay hasn't been healthy. They haven't been healthy, but even when they need – like. Well, not when they have been healthy. That doesn't make any sense. But even though they've been banged up, there's been spots where their defense could have shown up. That game versus Kansas City, forget about it. And then they let Atlanta waltz back into that game last week and couldn't even stop on a two-point conversion. It was like, guys. Kansas City almost lost to the Raiders, bro. Yeah, and 
again, Kansas City, which is one of the top four teams I put in there, but I don't think they're playing that good. And what's weird about Kansas City, and is kind of reflective of the rest of the league right now, is that they play different ways each fucking week. There is zero consistency. The week they play Tampa Bay, they're lighting up the Bucks. I mean, it, the offense is all over the place. Everything looks great. From the snap last week, they look like they put the offense back in a shell. And it was like, hold on, what's so different here? And if you I rewatch the game, like they're throwing all short shit. They're not going downfield. It's kind of like, what? You know, Kelsey, there's four touchdowns on, what, 30 yards reception or under that? That's yeah. nuts. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Anyway, I so, I, I mean, you know, Tampa Bay, throw them in there, and then you want to throw Dallas in there? Even with Cooper Rush under center? I mean, that that's the primo. So, I, I don't understand the point that like, you're saying that there's not enough good teams. Yeah, I, I don't think any of these teams are really all that good. I think Baltimore definitely is. I think Philadelphia is playing out of their mind right now. I think that uh, Buffalo, Philadelphia, Baltimore, I, I, Baltimore loses I, these games that they all should win. Like, they should have won Miami. They lost it. Right? They should have beat Buffalo. They lost it. You know, they're losing these crazy games that they should win. If they went their way, I mean, they'd be top of the pick. And then throw in KC because, I don't know, KC has this Jekyll and Hyde where they, they do look like world beaters, and then all of a sudden they're playing down to their potential. But outside of that, I, you know, I mean, Dallas, I'm sorry, I'm not sold. Tampa Bay, I'm not sold either. San Francisco, I'm not sold. But, I mean, like, you know good football when you see it. Do you not? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm – not in agreement with your statement that it's just a bad year of football. I, I just don't agree. There, there's, I mean, look at the two big games coming up this week. You got Casey versus uh, Buffalo, and you got the Cowboys versus the Eagles. Cowboys haven't given up more than 19 points. Right. Well, they're doing it all behind their defense, right? So, I, I mean, the defense is right now, if I'm not mistaken, let me check, but I think it's the better two uh, of the squads. Their uh, defense, where is it? It's got to be up top here. Uh, Dallas is fifth. And then their offense uh, can't be that far behind, but 17th. So, I mean, it is all defense. The fourth against the pass, 18th against the rush. All this is DVOA because that's what it, uh, I like to use. Chris doesn't really care. Um but, yeah, I mean, Dallas is getting it done with their defense right now. Micah Parsons, phenomenal. I got a ticket on him on, on best defensive player of the year. I should have put more on that. That would have a, a, a fucking made up for all he's my not, shit picks. Yeah, he's not going to win, though. Who? He's really good. He's not. Who's going to win? Parsons. Yeah, I know. Okay, so Parsons loses to who? Uh, I, he, he is the pick right now. I mean, there's I don't even know if there's anybody come. A close second. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look at all the stats. I I really can't think off the top of my head. I mean, T.J. Watt started well, out. I'll like do the work for you. It's Michael Parsons. You know, you, you can't. No. I mean, that's Watt, one man's opinion. Happening. That's not. The... I mean, you you could slice yeah, watch, it up. Watch that way out. Go look at all the stats that you want to look. I'm telling you, I, I did the work for you. It's Michael Parsons, and there's nobody even close right now. Um. But, yeah, Dallas is doing it with their defense, but their offense. I mean, you trust that offense? No. Not at all, right? I mean, do you trust it even when Dak comes back? Yes. Oh, really? See, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sold on that yet. They, I, don't, they, they haven't thrown the ball. They, I mean, they threw the ball 15 times last week or something like that. I, I think looking at it and watching the games, and I haven't, I haven't nearly watched – I haven't watched nearly as many games this year – uh, in repeat as I have years past. So, I, you know, I, I got to kind of, you know, level my uh, my comments here because, I you know, it's not like I've seen all these games every single week like I used to. But I, I think the real thing that I see week in and week out, and I don't know if you see this or not, and that's why I'm throwing it out there, is just, and we mentioned this before, so, I, you know, it's a little repetitive, but, like, I just think that the lack of quarterback play and – how the NFL has now catered down to college level quarterbacking has impacted the rest of the play throughout the league. And I get it, you need a quarterback. So if you can't get ones that fit the systems that you like that work, then you kind of have to make do with what you got. And I understand that. 
But, I mean, there you used to be able to pull quarterbacks from the college ranks, and some used to, you know, rise to the to the occasion. And, you know, I just don't see it. I mean, you got mixed mosh everywhere. Uh, uh, I don't know. Look, the, the rule changes to the quarterbacks, the rule changes to the, the, to the pass interference, to the catch rule. I think all those things add up into something different than what we grew up watching. Yeah, I, no, I agree with you wholeheartedly. But also, it, it's just the fact that these quarterbacks are allowed to keep playing college ball when they get to the pros. That's the part that I'm struggling with. You used to go from the college to the pro ranks, and you used to play pro football. And now you go from the college to the pro ranks, and you're still playing college football. Right? And I just, you know, some, I just haven't seen enough quarterbacks that have been able to excel their college game to the fact that I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that that's workable in the pros. You know, I just see shit. You know, I mean. What about Justin Herbert? I, I mean, you know what? He throws a great ball. He throws, you know, fantastic balls all over the field, and they're losing, right? I mean, they, they win the – I mean, the team's not good. I don't necessarily blame it on him, but he's not – I wouldn't say he's rising to the occasion. i definitely draft him over a ton of other people, you know. I mean, Josh Allen looks phenomenal. I, again, I have some questions in his game, but, I mean, you can't really argue with the production. To a junk. Who did? Well, they lost to the Chiefs. The Chargers lost to the Chiefs. That. Well, they, oh, and they got on, smoked on second, by the, they that, got. They had a horrible loss to the Jaguars. Yeah, but wasn't that the week after? Yeah, you know, there's a Jaguar. Yeah, that, there's a Jaguar team for for example, right? The Jaguars play. You watch them. They actually looked pretty good, right? Their defense looked pretty solid. Their offense had a, a, a some kind of nice identity to it. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get a stinker versus Houston. That explain me that one, because Houston is a terrible football team. They're a pretty the uh, Jaguars are not good. I I think that they played really well in a specific game, but I I don't think they're that good. I, I'm sorry, I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm going through, you know. <sighs> It's just frustrating to me because I, I would think that in week six you would have seen a, a better evolution of the the play throughout the league, and you just haven't seen it. And now I just I, I watch these games, and I'm just like, ugh, this is fucking tough to watch. It's tough to watch. I'm, I'm just trying to scope out the only couple of good teams. I want to watch Baltimore, KC, Philly, and Buffalo. You know, and then I'll make do with what got. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, there's for my uh, – pitiful rant on saying that I, I think that play has sucked, which you don't agree with, which you don't have to. Um, we'll see. Let's uh, let's do some uh, recaps of the week, which awful week. So maybe that's what prompted me to just shit on the NFL because uh, I did horrific. As did you, sir. You did not do good either. But uh, let's, let's open it up and uh, take this on here. First down. First down. Okay, so... Dogs favorites. Dogs continue to press on. They were 10 and 5 last week. They are 56% on the year. Of those 10, five of those dogs won outright. So it's the way to go. I mean, if you like dogs, and we said this last year, I, I mean, it's just shit. The dogs win. Uh, when they win, they win. So home dogs were 3 and 2. They're 55% on the year. Overs, unders, the unders won yet again. 9 and 7. They're 60% on the year. Teasers. This is how you know that the year has just been completely fucking screwy. Is that teasers right now for the point spread is about 70%. And that's it. And 68% on the favorites. But it gets even worse than that when you start talking about the, the totals. Because the overs right now for the year teased. Teased overs are 57%. Unders are 68%. So point total is... Overall, teased is 62%. I mean, 57% for total overs. Like, that's not crazy to you, Chris, or reflective of, like, how 
fucking baddie that the league is right now? I just think that's Vegas setting a line that's incorrect. Yeah, I, I mean, whatever. I, I, usually the teasers, like, I mean, we've done this for how many years now? They always sit at around 70, right? So when you get something that's like 57%, like, wow. I, I mean, points really come at a preview. And here's another one. We do halftime leads all the time, right? Do you know what the halftime leads were last week? You're going to say no, and I'm going to give you the number. But do you know? Yeah. Yep. No. No. <laughs> they were 9-5, and five, dude. So now, on the year, halftime leads are, are 70%. That's way under what they usually are. I'd have to get out the numbers, but I'm pretty sure they're pushing 80% usually for the halftime leads. So yeah, these... but doesn't doesn't that make for more of an exciting football game? Uh, yeah. Theoretically... You got it there because you're seeing games that aren't over at halftime, right? I'm just saying that consistently yes, speaking, yeah. I, it just hasn't happened like this before, right? You're just watching something different. And I, I think it's just, you know, a little jarring, at least to me, because I'm just not accustomed to any of this. I, I mean, I, I guess close games are exciting, but the gameplay again. So how did we do? Uh-oh. Well, we were terrible. You were better than me. You were six and nine, uh, picking all the games last week. I was three and twelve. Just a fucking bomber row. I still got you on the year though. I'm forty eight percent. You're forty five. Uh, as for the money tickets and sharps, it's still all about the money and the sharps right now. They're both sitting at about sixty percent. But they were no good last week either. Money was four and eight. Sharps were three and five. Tickets were just like me. Two and twelve. Terrible. Super picks were not good. You were 0 and 5 and Ofer. Ah, oh, another fucking bomb. But I was 1 and 4. Also a bomb. I'm sitting at about 50% for the super picks. You're at 36%. And then elsewhere, best bets, parlays, teasers, all that kind of shit. We didn't hit any much of anything. You hit your best bet and you also hit your prop bet. But I hit nothing. I was over, 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 over. Over. All over the place all over the place. But I mean, can you remember a week where not only were, I mean, we not good. Uh, I mean, you were the best of the bunch at six and nine. You were better than the money, money tickets and the sharps. But I mean, do you remember an, a week where the money was under 500, the tickets were under 500, the sharps were under 500, both of us were under 500? No. We've been doing the show for four years. I mean, I, I don't know if I ever remember a week where everybody was under 400, 500. The Dolphins lost to the Jets. Dude, I and you know what's funny is that again, I I love podcasting and I love listening to podcasting. There are so many smart people out there that watch football. There are so many entertaining people out there that do sh content about the NFL. I, I just have to say, guys, it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. It's completely fine to be wrong. There's no shame in it at all. And <laughs> because nobody's ever wrong which is fucking hysterical. And if you listen, you know, long enough, you can see the way that it spins so that they're never, you know, when something's right, that's what you talk about. When something's wrong, you don't mention it. Then the week, next week when it flips around, you talk about this, you talk about that. It's just fucking, it's pretty funny. Anyway. Um, well, right. it is gambling and the house always wins. We're just doing our best to put a spin on it. It's just like the other gambling I do, which is horse racing, which is I don't care how good of a, horseman you are how much you watch a horse run around the track it's the same shit you're still looking at a bunch of numbers on a piece of paper and and acting like you're giving an educated opinion on who you think's going to win the race or in this case how many yards somebody got last game is going to be reflective of how many yards are going to get this game you know it's 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 the same shit and all gambling across the board except Last week was a little weird because you saw a tremendous, starting with the 9.30 a.m. London game, uh, a, a tremendous uh, uh, loss, uh, uh, underdog I streak. I mean, come on. That that London game, I, I can't even, I, I'm a giant fan. I mean, great. We're 4-1 and one or whatever. It, it's the biggest joke of a 4-1 and one I've ever seen in my life. But they beat, they beat Green Bay in London playing with, Nothing but backup uh, practice players that got pulled up to the roster. I mean, it was practice players everywhere. Jalen Smith yeah. appeared. Jalen Smith. I didn't even know that guy was still in the league. 
You want to talk about somebody who, yeah. who, who lucked out. I mean, that guy blew his knee out in the – the was it the championship game that he blew his knee out? He, he, or the last game. I don't think It was the last the, game. No. I don't know what it was. Yeah. But, you know, and then – He was so good in college. He was so good. But Dallas took him anyway and then paid him. They still gave him the money, and then he just ended up not being good, and they just got rid of him. Anyway, he ended up on the Giants practice squad, got called up and played last week. And he was a, 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 one of these slaps that suited up for the New York football Giants and then beat Brett Favre on the road. Did you see the end of that game, by the way? The Giants game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched every second of it. Favre hates LaFleur. Hates him. <laughs> Absolutely fucking despises the guy. The I, fact- I mean, I don't know. I mean, again, uh, let's not go too far back in in the past here. But um, all right, so let's go into this week. Let's pick the two best games here. I'll let you pick it, and then we will uh, say adios to our uh, our homes here and fly out to where you want to go. There, I mean, you want to do the Bills Chief game first or second? First, we can do that one first. That's that's probably the best game of the week. Well, that's. That's labeled as the best game of the week for many people. I, I would think so. I mean, you think there's a... Well, all right, let's go there, and then I'll let you call the second one, so... Second down. Second down. Yeah. All right, so we will head out to Kansas City. The Chiefs coming off that miraculous win versus the Las Vegas Raiders in Arrowhead on Monday night. Again, crazy game that was. Can you believe the Aikman uh, fucking issue? That they have everybody right now, the controversy. He had to come out and address yeah, I, it. It's so stupid. It, it, like, it, it was so stupid. He shared his opinion and all of a sudden he's in, he's I, in trouble for it. Is it chauvinistic? I guess to an extent. To to an extent. But I mean, it, it's just... Uh, <laughs> the fact that you can't compare and contrast opposite things, you know, without it being negative to one side. You know, I, take the dresses off is not something that everybody should, you know, lose their fucking mind about. But it was everybody. Oh, and one of the goddamn shows that I listened to today came out and was like, this, this is this is the lucrosity right now of Podcast Nation, is that this was recorded, uh, published, I think, on Wednesday, recorded on Tuesday. And the guy who hosts this specific show turned around and was like, yeah. And nobody talked about this. Uh, nobody talked about Troy Aikman. And, uh, you know, I'm listening to the game, and then they play the clip of him saying the dress is off, and he was like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that he said it. And it was like, really? Re- that, that was talked about immediately when it happened. Immediately when it happened, everybody talked about that one. Uh, but anyway, so we've got the Chiefs coming off that miraculous victory. One-pointer uh, killed uh, a, a couple of my things, uh, at least my one of my straight bets. Hosting the Bills. They're home dogs here, so we start off with the home dogs right away. Bills favored by two and a half. Over under is 54. This is the big dog of the week. Big dog. And otherwise, let's look at the stats. We've got the Sharps in on the Bills. We've got the tickets and the money in on the Chiefs. Tickets, more of the two of those categories. 65% of the tickets on the Chiefs. 61% of the money. So what happens? They they do they play down to your Raiders and they play up this week, or are the Chiefs just really flawed and they had a good week against the Bucks two weeks ago? I think they got really lucky that they have a home game here because uh, as much as I love Buffalo, I think they're walking into a situation where the Chiefs kind of learned a little bit about their team against the Raiders having to come back like that. And I think that only improves their offense. Like they, they won that game without, like you said, Travis Kelsey going off for 150 yards. Yeah, but they played that way. You know, like I, I just, I don't understand what the hell the game plan was in that game. They looked, I mean, not only did they look bad, but the, the game was run shitty too. You know what I mean? I, don't, I, I I thought they, I mean they they tore off what twenty three or twenty seven points, like right off, like twenty seven to zero. Well, well, how many points did they score in a row? Seventeen or or twenty? 
Yeah. Like they, I, they came back with a with ferociously. Well, and and, and the Raiders and can't they, hold a lead worth a shit. Oh I, no, I, I, texted, I texted you that during the game. They're they're they don't know how to close out a game. Otherwise, they could be four and one. I mean, it, they, they, it's amazing. They, just, they can't close a game. Yeah, it's. And it's it's all McDaniel's. He just he, he just fucks it up as soon as he gets you know in front. I I just don't understand it. it. I want to blame it on it's Carr. Okay. But I mean, can't. like they have a they have a little bit of time to make up for it, but I mean they can't be. They lost games they needed to win to make a playoff push, but they can build off of it. It is McDaniel's first year, so I I have faith that. Unfortunately, Devontae Adams will be another year older next year, but I I, I think that they'll they'll build off this. I mean, year. one in four, you guys are done, right? You've thrown in the towel. I don't think they've thrown in the towel. No, you as a fan, fuck them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, Who cares? About I, I mean, I love them. Uh, I'll continue to watch them, but I I have no faith that they're going to make uh, uh, the playoffs. No, no, they're, they're going to try, but. I mean, the Giants are four and one. I know for a fact they're not making the fucking playoffs. So it, it, it's fine to admit it. Um, but I again going back to that Chief Raider game. I, I mean, the Raiders should have won it, right? If the Raiders win that game, are the Chiefs still two and a half point dogs here? Or are they more? No, they're they're home. They're they're going to be. I mean, they're going to be. Is this the first time? They've been an underdog in like two years. Oh, I don't know. I that might have been a stat that's thrown out there. I have not heard it, and I haven't done the research, so I don't know that fact. I I just realized the Chiefs are underdogs. I mean, I just thought about that. I knew it, but like I'm now realizing the Chiefs are underdogs. When was the last time you saw a Chiefs plus anything? Uh, I mean, long time ago. I mean, maybe the playoffs yeah. it hasn't happened this year, so it probably would have went back into the uh, the playoffs or late last season. So, I mean, they're doing so against the Bills, right? And so the Bills right now are probably I, – I still think they're tops in the league. They are uh, they have the second DVOA defense. They have the 10th uh, – sorry, the 7th DVOA offense. So, you know, I mean, this team has got it on both sides – some injury concerns, I guess, a little bit on the defensive side of the ball, but I mean, they're you know not nothing that has really impacted them all that well. I mean, the one the one flaw in their season so far has been the loss to the Dolphins, which now looks fluky because the Dolphins are you know they're the walking wounded here. They don't even have a quarterback. They're on their third quarterback right now. So Kansas, yeah, that that's that team runs purely off of to his health. Yeah, I mean that's it. But I mean, you don't know when Tua's coming back, and Bridgewater's out, and they're going with the. I think Bridgewater could play, but he's going to be the backup. So, um, but Kansas City's right behind Baltimore in terms of offense. They're third. Uh, neither team can really rush. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, Buffalo seven. I'm sorry, Kansas City's third. Uh, but no, neither team can rush. Buffalo's thirty in rushing, and KC's nineteen. So this is all through the air, the two of them. And so then you want to go to the flip side of the ball and look at the defense. Buffalo ranks sixth against the pass, and KC's nineteenth, which screams yeah. Bills on a short on a short favorite here. Yeah, like I said, I I think you're going to get when it comes down to it. I think Vegas is going to be you know people across the country are going to be very very split on this. This is going to be what are the tickets in the money? Tickets right now. Now this is uh, a four o'clock game, so you're going to see more, you know, cash come in. But right now, tickets are on the Chiefs side, sixty-five percent. The money is on the Chiefs side, sixty-one percent. Yeah, and the sharps are the other. Sharps way. are slanted on good. the Bills, right? Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be a really close split. It's going to be fifty-fifty. Chiefs are home. I, I always love the Chiefs at home. The Bills are probably the better team, but I'm banking on uh, Kansas City being able to handle. I, I, I don't I know the Bills have a very highly ranked defense, but they also haven't played the likes of a uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes and you know I, I like I know you think Baltimore is really good. Oh, they are. I mean, they they have flaws just like everybody else, but they I mean they're good. 
I, I mean, God, they, uh, <laughs> I just wish that Lamar Jackson could hit an open receiver downfield. That would be beautiful to see for a change. Yeah. They're, they, all he does is throw to Andrews. That's why Andrews has 10 billion fantasy you, points. Well, what was it last week? I, we'll get to Baltimore eventually, but what, three open three open looks downfield didn't hit on one of them? I mean, he wasn't even close. Yeah, that's I mean, why his career what is the in. What the fuck are we doing? Like, just hit your his, open receiver. His, yeah, but he's never been a passer. He's been I, a runner. I fully understand. I'm with you 100%. But, I, I mean, it's funny. You know, you heard about Lamar Jackson for weeks one through four, and or one through three at least, and then you haven't really heard all the Lamar Jackson talk for two weeks. And it's like, ah, oh, yeah, no, funny how it not at goes. All. Um, but I'm with you here on the Chiefs, too. I, you know, again, I have questions a little bit about not the Bills as a team, just, you know, Josh Allen in spots. Because when he doesn't look good, he reminds me a little bit of, you know, the harsh criticism I had for him when he first came in the league. Not accurate, you know, misses the open guys. You know, I've just seen him in the games that I've watched be fixated a little bit. And sometimes it's worked out. You know, other times that that Dolphin game, it didn't. And I, I'm with you here. I think the Chiefs. I'm going to pick the Chiefs. And it's probably going to blow up in my face or our faces, I guess. No, I, I you can't. If, if, the, if you pick the Bills and the Chiefs when you're like, ah, oh, it was the Chiefs. If you pick the Chiefs and the Bills when you're like, damn, yeah, the Bills are pretty good. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't I don't think this is a game that I'm I'm gonna be overly upset with. And looking at my bets, I don't I don't think I laid too much directly on them. Uh I lied. They are in a bunch of my bets. I yeah. lied. <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah. I no, actually can't I am believe what upset. I just saw. Me either, Chris. I'm gonna I am gonna be upset. I, I changed my mind. Yes, I'm gonna be upset if the Chiefs lose. It's about to get at least when Chris talks. At least when Chris talks. I don't know. I'm different. Uh, I, I like. I like. I. I actually do like the Chiefs here. I like the Chiefs in this spot. You know. I. I mean, Monday night was a complete letdown for me uh, because I want to see this Chiefs team rise to the occasion. They did not. I think they do it here. And I. I, I think. I do. Get that, I do too. I think we get bad Bills. You know. I. I don't think the Bills are a bad team. I think we're just going to get bad Bills in this spot. So uh, yeah, I I agree a hundred percent. That like I said, like Josh Allen, look what he did against Miami, right? Like that that's a perfect example of what could happen. Yeah, very and, easily. I mean, Spagnola's Spagnola's still good oh, at I, dialing I up some pressure. I was waiting for you to. I've been waiting for you to say well, his I, name. He, you you can't talk Chiefs. Without talking about Spagnola, well, can't. no, because because when their defense does rise to the occasion, it, it's the shit that he's done well for decades, right? I mean, going all the way back to the Giants and the Nashville to the Giants defense. days. Gar, yeah, gar, 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 uh, well, gar, look, gar, gar. no, stop. I, I, when he went to the Rams, he was fucking horrible, right? And I mean, he he is not, I think, on the whole, done a fantastic job with his Chiefs defense, but in certain spots, he dials it up. And, and, you know, they, they show improve. I just, I, I think that this might be one of those spots where he's able to dial up a little bit of pressure and, uh, you know, throw throw Allen into a little bit of a tizzy. So, uh, but I don't know, you know. But I, I'm not I'm a with huge back I'm with you. I just, you know, he does, like many people, he does certain things really well. Uh, and I think that this might cater uh, to his uh, his strategy, but who knows, right? We'll see. We'll find out. So I'm on the Chiefs. You're on the Chiefs as well. Um, and then the 54. I, you know, 54. You would think immediately over, right? Yes. I hundred percent. I know, but I think it's going to be an under. <laughs> I think it's going to be an under. I don't know. For some reason, I, I'm, I'm thinking Chiefs in the under here. But I mean, over unders. I, I I've not been. Good reading those. Although they they were part of my uh, parlay last week that I hit. That was the uh, Tampa Bay under uh, with Atlanta. I was good on that one. But yeah, I mean, you would think points galore here. Uh, for some reason, I, I head scratch and I just think under. But either or. So we got the Bills Chiefs. We're both going Chiefs. Where do you want to go for game two? I mean, I, it's got to be the it's got to be the Sunday nighter, right? 
No, 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 no. I want to talk about the Commanders versus the Bears. Yeah. <laughs> See what he did there. Good. All right. So, uh, well, I mean, there's yeah. nothing else other than the Eagles Cowboys, right? I mean, there's nothing. No, yeah. there's no, there's nothing else other. To, there's no. All right. So let's head out to Philly. Cowboys heading out that way. They're going to be going into uh, Philadelphia, where the Eagles are going to be six and a half point favorites. Let's see if that uh, line moved again. All the lines that I talk are pulled from. Uh, DraftKings, I pulled these earlier today. Let's see if this one moved. Eagles were six and a half. See if the uh, Cowboys have gotten any love here in the short term. And they have. It's down a full point. So DraftKings now, it is five and a half. So the Eagles, five and a half point favorites. Uh, the the Sharps are on the Eagles. Everything else is on the Cowboys. 66% of the tickets. Uh, and actually, the sorry, the money is split. So you got the Sharps leaning toward the Eagles. You got the tickets heavy on the Cowboys. Go figure. Dallas is a public team. Uh, it, Dallas offense is, you know, it, it, it's up there. Where's the, uh, the, the, the Dallas offense here? Uh, DVOA. How did I miss it? Oh, it's not actually that far. It's it's 17. Their defense, like we were just talked about this fucking two seconds ago. God, you're so stupid, Rich. Suck a motherfucker. Uh, Dallas's defense is six. Dallas's uh, offense is 17. Philly, meanwhile, is fifth offense, fifth defense. So, uh, I don't. Five and a half. Too many points. Wow. That wait. So it moved a. Full point since a couple hours ago. Yeah, and I think it opened. Uh, yeah, b- because it was six and a half before, but now at least it. I know. Games, it's I, six and it's uh, five and a half now. And I think it oh, opened damn. at four and a half, went up to six and a half. Now it's down to five and a half. Bills, Chiefs, Cowboys. No, it's at six and a half still. Uh, I'm 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 staring at it at my computer right now. That's weird because I am too. Uh, let me do a refresh. Um, giving bad lines here. Jesus, you don't want to do that. Uh, anyway, but uh, Eagles yeah. Cowboys. I mean, it, whether it's six and a half or five and a half, are the Eagles too big a favorite here versus the Cowboys, who have a good defense? Uh, well, yeah, I I think that six and a half is a lot. I think that they get six and a half because they're home. And I think that they were kind of exposed last week against Arizona. Arizona did a great job of, you know, staying in that game and and kind of containing Jalen Hurts from just destroying people like he has been. Yeah, I you know, the, the Eagles lines have been performing great. Uh, their defense is all right. The secondary, you know, a little questionable, you know. They go on the road last week, and and then the Cardinals do their second half thing, where Kyler Murray goes into, you know, uh, you know, I'll make it up myself offense, and ends up turning it around. So, I just yeah. So and you're right, it is six over and a half under. Here. Right, six and a half yep. and an over under forty two. Yeah, a weird over under so, there at forty two, right? So you're looking at like they're expecting. 24-17? I mean, I don't know. I, I think both these teams are going to score. Well, that's it. 24-17 gives you the under, and it gives you the cover. So, I, I mean, I don't... Philly's defense is pretty good. Yeah, they're solid. Philly's def- Yeah, they're solid. What's, what, what are they ranked, they're, Mr. DBOA? They're, they're fifth. Third against the pass, 20th against the rush. So, there if there go. is... 20. Something that you're eyeing, maybe Dallas can run the ball a little bit against their defensive front there. All right. Don't want to foreshadow what's going to happen later on in the show, but... But... You may or may, you may, or may not have picked up on something there that would be good for a prop. Prop bet. bets. Uh, I did not go that way with the prop bets. I did go uh, at least uh, one rushing that I was looking at. Two rushing, but I did not look anywhere here. Yeah, I I love Dallas's events. I I mentioned it before. They haven't given up more than nineteen points, even when they were getting hammered in Week One. Tampa Bay still couldn't score that many points on them. Their defense is really good. I I'm I don't know how they're going to do with an intra division rival like this on the road in prime time. I 
who knows? But I feel like such uh, a square. I'm I'm picking the I'm picking the Cowboys here. Yeah, so am I. <sighs> yeah, I'm 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 100 on the on the Cowboys. Yeah, but that does. I love it as a tease even more. Uh <laughs> Oh, what? You love the Cowboys as a tease versus the Eagles as a tease, bringing it down? Yeah, because I actually like the Cowboys to slow this game down so much so that they have a chance to win. As a teaser leg, which one do you think is the better leg? The Eagles minus half a point or the Cowboys getting 12 and a half? Cowboys getting 12 and a half. That's, I mean, that's that's... That's two touchdowns. I mean, that's that's a lot of points. They got to win by two touchdowns against a defense that's ranked. What 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 did you say they were ranked? Uh they are ranked sixth. Sixth. You know, it's sixth out of thirty-two teams. You're talking a top in the top twenty-five percent of the league. Their their defense is good. You you mentioned it. They have the number one uh, front runner for defense player of the year. Yeah, They're for sure. Good regardless. Regardless, I I don't care who's their quarterback. Cooper Rush is fine. He, he gets the job done. He, he doesn't do he, – he's not going to throw for 350, 400 yards, but, I mean, he, he knows how to be a game manager, and he finally realized that if he just throws 50% of his passes to CeeDee Lamb, the team does good. So, Yeah, see, I, I just – I'm picking the Cowboys here because of the six and a half, but I like the Eagles to win the game. And so then considering the teaser legs and the way teasers have been so screwy this year, I just can't figure in my head which one I would like more if I was to throw either of these in a teaser, which I'm not. But I think my gut goes Eagles bringing that down just to half a point. But, you know, to go to what you were talking about is that, I mean, you're giving that defense 12 and a half points if you pick the Cowboys. I mean, they both kind of feel like good legs. Yeah, but if you really think the Eagles are going to win, you can't. You have to go that way. Yeah, I mean, because then it just gives you. I mean, it's a half point. You just got to win. Right, it's unlimited. But if you, I mean, you could try and hit a middle, but good I mean, luck. the the other thing about uh, last week, we finally started seeing blowouts because we hadn't really. I mean, we'd seen them here and there. But we didn't see him like last week. We had these are some of the blowout games: twenty nine points, thirty five points, twenty three points, uh, a whole bunch of sevens, twenty two points, twelve points. You know, and, and so that's what always you know scares me is the blowout factor. And you know, will the Eagles blow them out here and, and cover that six? That's that, that's oh, man. You know, gut says pick the Cowboys, but. I do think the Eagles, if they open, if there's a team to open it up, it would be the Eagles. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's probably correct. If there's going to be a blowout, I, it's definitely not going to be the Cowboys' way. No, like you know, like Cooper Rush, you know, comes back down to earth, regression aspect. Cowboys stink it up. Their defense could be good, but their offense doesn't do shit. And then the Eagles, you know, go up two scores. Yeah, you know, and that's yeah. the fear. But, all right, so I'm going Cowboys. You're going Cowboys, too. The 42, I definitely think that shies to the over, no? Which I feel like is a sucker's bet because you scratch your head and you're like, why is it 42 points? Eagles win, it's an under. Cowboys win, it's an over. Yeah, I got you. No, uh, wait. I think I said that the opposite way. Cowboys win, it's an under. Eagles win, it's an over. Oh, okay, you meant it the other way. I actually thought like if the Eagles won means the Cowboys' offense wouldn't show. Um, but who knows? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I really think it's over. 42 is just not a lot of points. It's just kind of weird. It's a weird line there. But uh, Cowboys for both of us, and those are really the two good games. At least you get to end Sunday with a solid game at night, you know, and watch. That means it's going to stink. You, you still got to suffer through uh, Tariko and Collinsworth. It's just in that whole – how do you screw up the NBC broadcast as bad as they have? That broadcast is awful. Awful. Um, that host, with, with what, what, what's, what's, the, what's the girl's name that's now the host? They stole her from ESPN NBA. Uh, I forgot her name. Oh, we talked about this before. Are you talking about uh, uh, Collinsworth? 
Well, no, I mean, Collinsworth, I, you know, you either like him or you don't. I, I just, I, I don't think he moves the needle. I'm just, I'm just tired of all these old broadcasters. I, it, it's just, it's time for new breath. When these guys all got their jobs, they were all in like their 30s or early 40s. Now these guys are all in their 70s and nobody in their 30s and 40s is getting gigs. And if you do, it's like, you know, it, it's the studio girl. You know, whatever her name is. And you throw it with Dungey and then you got, uh, you know, I smile slapped on his face. The slapper, the clapper, whatever, Jason Garrett. Oh, my God. It's just so terrible. And she's terrible, too. She was wearing this, like, purple cat suit on Sunday night. And it was like, what the hell are you wearing? You know, I not that I care. I, you know, I don't watch these studio shows anyway. But at least it used to be something you throw in the background. Now it's just like, oh, fuck. These guys are all terrible. I mean, hell, <laughs> fucking Terry Bradshaw is completely off the reservation. That guy's lost. Have you seen him? He's battling all kinds of shit. Uh, I, I, I don't. I, I, to be honest, like Sunday Night Football, I tend to uh, mute and I like play it on my computer and I, I actually do other things. I, I can't listen to Collinsworth. Yeah, I can't. I can't, I, I can't listen He's... to a lot of them. You know, I do on Monday Night Football. I, I occasionally throw on the Manning cast, but you know what? That kind of has gotten old a little bit too. Because they really do this. I mean, they haven't really taken the broadcast to any new lengths. It's just the same thing. Which isn't bad. It's definitely probably better than Buck and Aikman. Jeez. Uh, but anyway, now we're talking about broadcasting. Who gives a fuck? Uh, all right, so let's go down the rest of the slate. Third down. Third down. Uh, I guess we'll do tonight's game. Commanders on the road, favored by one versus the Bears. Who do you got here? Over under is 38 points. This is just a Thursday night shit fest. Like the Thursday night games aren't bad enough. They play so weird. Now you got two terrible teams. Who cares? Uh, couldn't have been any worse than last week, man. That was really bad. Uh, you're you're talking about Commanders Bears, dude. Commanders Bears. I There's dude. not even a storyline here. Dude, last week was the 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 worst football game I've ever watched and i watched every second of it but up until you actually watched the game there was a little bit of interest and then even in the game you're like ah you know maybe russell wilson turns it around i you know maybe matt ryan puts something together i hear what are you looking at commanders and bears there's nothing to look at there's nothing to watch there's no storylines there's nothing to watch i mean it's just a football game yeah i mean i listen i I love Thursday nights. Like it's just a great way to lead into the weekend. So I always go into it with a kind of a, a happy uh, uh, moment in my in my night, just enjoying sitting there, understanding that like there's at least football on. You know, like it's it's better than just watching some shit ass sitcom again. You know? No, I got you. I mean, you're you're the half full guy. I'm pissing vinegar. So I, uh, you know. I, that's just been, yeah. you know, my walk of life. So, yeah. uh, who do you got here? I'm taking the Bears. Oh yeah, me too. I the kid. Did you see that kid who got shot is starting? Uh, oh, Robinson. Yeah, I picked him up. I actually was able to grab him in one league where I actually needed running backs. I couldn't believe it. He was still sitting out there. I said, "Oh shit, I'm going to grab him." So I picked him up. Whatever last week when they wrote that they were activating him or whatever. And now uh, today he's getting the start, so good for him. You know that, that's what you know. Terrible yeah. shot. You know you should have shot him right in the knee. Uh, instead, you shot him through the knee, and you didn't get anything. You got arrested. Did they ever catch the guys that tried to jack him? I don't even remember. The I name of that story. think they did. Yeah, they probably tried to hit him with a, with a Glock switch. Have you heard all the, the Glock switch uh, problems that they're having everywhere? It's pro- I don't know what that is. It's no. probably like a year. It's probably like a year long now. But they've made a, a device basically for the switch. It's probably like a year and change. It probably dates farther than that. But they started selling everywhere. But basically, you could just put it on your Glock handgun, and it turns it into an automatic weapon. And uh, you just put Glock switch into into YouTube because YouTube has no problem putting any of that stuff up, right? And, you know, if you get into any kind of other walks of life, you know they'll they'll you know, edit the shit out of you. But if you want to put up a Glock switch and just show yourself rifling off 50 rounds, uh, you know, they have no problem showing it. So put it in. It, it's, it's insane because these things are like all over the streets uh, of, of shitty neighborhoods. And it's like <laughs> cops are like, yeah, it fires about 30 rounds in 2.5 seconds. We don't know what to do. And it's funny because everybody's shooting them. They, they have no hand control. So the gun just goes off and the bullets literally go everywhere. 
and they just had actually a shooting up uh, Marist College. Some guy went to go see his kid, and somebody, he was in a hotel, and somebody tried to jack the hotel, and he had a Glock with a switch on, and then he must have pulled the trigger, and the bullet sprayed everywhere, and it hit the poor father and in the fucking head or something. Killed the guy. Fucking nuts. But anyway, um, Chicago, you know, watch out for the Glock switches tonight. So if the Bears win, probably see a lot of gunshots going off. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, I don't know. I digress. Anyway, uh, Chicago, bad area to live right now. Uh, Bears, we're picking them both. Uh, as is tickets and money, they're all over them. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about their uh, the Thursday night game. At least I did. I think I just plowed over you for the entire podcast here. So I'll kick it to you next. Uh, Colts. Favored over the Jaguars in Indianapolis. Colts by two. Sharps and money like the Colts. Tickets like the Jags over under 42. What do you think? I'm still thinking about a fucking Glock switch. What What the? What are you talking about? What I just is that? Put it in, just put it in YouTube later and watch. It turns a handgun into a fully automatic weapon. It's some of the scariest and most ridiculous shit you'll ever see in your life. Wow. It's scary because it's in everybody's hands, and it's funny because it just serves no purpose. It just the, the bullets fly everywhere because you just have no hand control. So, anyway, let, let, let's get to Indianapolis here. Colts, Jaguars. Colts favored by two. Uh, Colts are one and a half point favorites as of right now. Okay, whatever. Take the hook. Add the hook in there. Or take the hook away. Yeah, I love the I love the hook. Uh, yeah, I like the Colts. I I don't you know rather than break down every single one of these games, I think Jonathan Taylor coming back is is going to help them dramatically. Yeah, I'm on the Jaguars here. Uh, the, the Colts I just think are horrific. Uh, you know, I, I I I can't fathom why the Jaguars, who is everybody's you know darling child. For four weeks, uh, you know, suffers that one loss to Houston, and now all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're two point dogs on the road here versus the Colts. I mean, weren't they like seven? I don't have the. Weren't they like a six or seven point favorite two weeks ago for somebody? Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm remembering that yeah. correctly. Um, so I, I went with the Jaguars. So you're going with the Colts there. So next game is going to be the Packers hosting the Jets. Big spread here. Packers favored by seven and a half if that's stuck. Uh, you know, I hear a lot of Jet talk right now. Right now, the money and the Sharps are on the Jets, as is the tickets. But the money a lot, 67% here, over under 45. I don't know about this. I I, I think that the Packers are going to just smoke them. Me too. I, I, like, I, I don't even think this is going to be close. This, is, this leads me to believe it's going to be like a 20-point game. Yeah, I and think, I, I, I don't, I don't know what happened out there, but they're going to be pissed, and they're playing back at uh, Lambeau, and the Jets are not as good as they, they're not good enough to beat teams forty-one to ten like they did last week. No, and I understand the argument from all the pros saying seven and a half points is a lot of points, and you know, I mean, obviously, pros pick the dogs and then move over a couple of selections over to the favorites where it's warranted. So this would just be seven and a half points, Jets. You know, it's too many points, but you know, not enough points in my. I, I like you think that this is a get right game, where they open it up a little bit on this Jets uh, team. I, I know the Jets. I mean, kudos. You know, the Jets are three and two. Uh, you know, it's been a solid start from a miserable beginning, and yeah, Wilson comes back. Their offense looks a little bit better, but I, I think the Packers really roll here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like I said numerous times through the years. I really don't like to bet with or against the Jets or the Giants, but I have to. I mean, this is one of my super picks. It's in parlays. You it's know, one like of my super picks, like too. It. It's one of my super picks, too. Yeah, I I can't help but, but throw them. I throw them in one of my teasers, I think, later on. So, I, yeah, I, I re- they're going to roll them, I think. All right, well, speaking of New York football Giants, as you just mentioned them, we don't like to bet with the New York teams either way, but the Giants are the next game up. They are going to be home dogs. So we had the Bears as a home dog, then we got the Giants as a home dog. Ravens will be traveling into East Rutherford. They will be five-and-a-half-point favorites. The over-under is 45. Sharps are liking the Giants, and then everything else is on the Ravens. Heavy on terms of money, 86% of the money pool in on Baltimore. Uh, I'll just kick it off here. I, the, 
Giants, I'm happy that you guys are 4-1. and one. It's been fun, I guess, to an extent. But I think this is Ravens all day, every day here on Sunday. The five and a half points yes. doesn't scare me. Yeah, I it I saw it at six. I like five and a half even more. Yeah, so you're with me there. I you know I, I yeah. know that the Ravens defense is a little suspect. They just lose Marquez Williams to the uh, IR, but yeah, you know, the Giants are doing this with all backup players. I mean, they're all practice players. And great that you've been able to get it done. And Saquon has had a phenomenal beginning of the season. He's hurt, by the way, so he's got a banged up shoulder. That happened randomly. I thought that was going to be a broken collarbone. I was like, oh, shit, here he is. And then, then, then Yeah, he- I couldn't believe he got back in the game. That, that looked horrible. Yeah, it's probably a labrum or some weird shit like that internally. He'll probably have to play with it the whole rest of the year and then ultimately miss the last, like, five, six weeks of the season, right when it's playoff time. For fantasy owners like myself that own them. But anyway, uh, so we're both in on the uh, on the Ravens there, favored by the five and a half versus the G-Man. Bengals are going to be traveling to New Orleans. I, there are eight home dogs here, so here's another one. Saints are underdogs in New Orleans by two. Uh, Bengals favored. The tickets like the Bengals at 83%. The Sharps like the Saints and the over under the last piece here is 43. So you get another one of these like 40, you know, low 40s. And I've heard a lot of people hopping on the Saints. Saints seem to be a pretty trendy pick this week. Really? Yeah, I've heard it I heard it several spots, but I have heard the Saints getting picked. Bengals by the way are Ugh. is they're my best bet. So, I'm all over the Bengals here. Yeah, we talked about this game last week. This, uh, I'm with the Bengals too. I I can't see. I just I just don't think the Saints are that good. I, the Bengals still have a, a, so much talent. Yeah, well, across it, the board, it was the it was the it was the look ahead line because it was a pick 'em, and now it's minus two. So, Bengals all day. Yeah, me as well. I, I again I, the same thing. I just I I don't understand it. But again. I, this is going to be a game that turn around. It's like my best bet, so it's going to lose. So the Bucks are going to be traveling into Pittsburgh. Another home dog, Steelers. They got destroyed last week. They are now underdogs by eight versus Tampa Bay. The over under here is forty four. The money all over the Steelers here at seventy nine percent. The tickets all over the Bucks at seventy three percent. Does the eight points scare you away from taking the Steelers here? For me, it was an auto pick. No, I'm never picking the Steelers ever again. <laughs> there he is. He's done. He's done with them. I've been there before. You just get to a point where you just get beat up by a team and you just can't get with them anymore. No doubt. Uh, I, I mean, you, you have no faith in the Steelers' offense scoring any kind of points here? They got destroyed. Yeah, it was ugly. By the Bills. Ugly. On the road, though. On the road. First game picket played. None of that, that. None of that matters to you, though. No, I mean they're going to score some points, probably. But Tampa's defense is even better than Buffalo's defense. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, the Bucks let Atlanta. Now Atlanta's probably a scrappier team than the Steelers are here. That's a division know. game. They they know each other. They have way more history. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, this the, look, I I think I threw this in my teaser, just in case. Uh, let me check. Yeah, this is one of my teaser games too. Like I I, I like it more at two, but I, I'm still going to pick the Bucks at eight. All right, so you're on the box. I'm going to get beat up with the Steelers here for a second week in a row, as I'm going to go with uh, with Pittsburgh here. I even what was the final score last week? Uh, the final score was as the plane takes off a couple times. Um, the final score, they won by five, right? No, 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 the, uh, uh, the Steelers. Oh, the, uh, the Steelers score. Hold on. I, I had it. It was what? 38, three or something like that. Uh, wasn't 38 it 38 to 10? 38, three. 38, three. I even teased it up to 20 and oh. they still, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got destroyed. Yeah. Didn't cover. It was ugly as shit. Um, At twenty, what? Where were the the Bucks? Was twenty to fifteen? Yeah, twenty to fifteen. So the Bucks were twenty to fifteen, thirty-eight to three the other way. It was ugly all the way around. Yeah, but that one covered with the tease. All right, I we're done talking to Steelers. They did get blown out. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pay for it picking them here. So, 
Uh, the Falcons, just before mentioned, as they played the Bucks, they are now going to be a home dog versus the 49ers. So five and a half points here. The Sharps and the money love the Falcons. 85% of the money pool in on them. 59% of the tickets are going to shy over to the 49ers. Pros, Joes. Over, under is 44 and a half. So you see nothing but these low, low to mid 40 numbers this week after everything that happened with over, unders uh, through five weeks. Uh, Falcons here. I'm, I'm on the Falcons. Five and a half points at home. 49ers banged up. Not sold on Jimmy G on the road. Best bet. Best bet is the 49ers probably, right? For, yeah. 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 So they, yeah. Uh, well, you know, go with you, not me, because uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. So uh, you're going to take the Bucs. You're going to take the 49ers. So you're liking the uh, you're liking the, the favorite teams here. I just – I mean, the Falcons are fine. Like, they might throw up some points, but – I don't know, man. I I actually uh, past couple of weeks I've watched the Forty ers play almost their entire game, and they're good. Like, yeah, they're 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 a pretty good team. You're literally right now you're one. Uh, well, we both picked the dogs, but other than that, you're on a streak of one, two, three, four, five, six favorites right in a row, just ripping down the favorites. Uh, yeah, that ends soon though. <laughs> All right. So you're going to go 49ers. I'm going to go Falcons on here. So let's see if it ends in the next one as we travel to Cleveland. Cleveland is a home favorite. Uh, first time in four games here that we talked about a home favorite. Two and a half over the Patriots. The tickets like the Pats. The money likes the Browns, but barely. Uh, Sharps haven't taken a side here. 43 and a half is the over under. Yeah. So I said it ended soon, and it ends right here because I'm taking the Pats at plus two and a half. Oh Jesus, we are. Uh, yeah, I'm on the other side. I'm on the other side. I, I took the Browns here. Uh, I why do you take the Patriots here? Two and a half on the road. You're thinking they're pulling out the win? Uh yeah, I do. I know that. I know that Detroit's offense was a sham and. That showed last week. Yeah, for sure. But that team's a sham. I mean, yeah. But but if New England does something right, uh, they definitely. Uh, if they do something right, it's it's definitely defending the run, and uh, Cleveland's really, really good at running the ball, and if they can't run it. Jacoby Brissett's not going to beat them. Well, New England, I hate to break it to you, at least DVOA, and then New England's 28th against the rush. They're ninth overall, but 28th against the rush. Uh, no, they're like fifth. I'm just talking about DVOA. Uh, well, the statistics I was looking at today, they were like ranked fifth or something. So you think they're going to be able to pull it off here? I, I just I, I think this is yeah. I think this is Browns all day. I think they just run, smash the Patriots into submission. Uh, you know I, I Patriots that offense they they've got to go on the road now. I, I know last week was you know rainbows and unicorns and all that kind of shit for that offense, but I, I think I mean Browns defense is pretty good too. So you know I, I think. Better sides of the ball here with the Browns. I, the scary part is Brissett because I think Brissett's just a disaster waiting to happen. But not like the Patriots are any different here. But uh, I'm going to go with the Patriots. You're going to go with New England there. You're, you're thinking an outright win too, huh? Uh, yeah, I do. All right. Well, what about I the ne- what about this next game where you got the Vikings on the road, favored by three and a half against the Dolphins? Everybody loves the Dolphins. Sharps, uh, tickets are split, but Sharps and the money all over the Dolphins here. 45 and a half. So, again, we haven't broke anything over 45 yet. Well, this is 45 and a half, whatever. But Vikings favored by three and a half. I'm, I'm taking the Vikings I, here. Yeah, I love the Vikings too. Yeah, uh, you know, Dolphins are on their third string quarterback. Things have not looked good. I, I, I question that coach a little bit. You know, I, I, he hasn't been playing with a full deck. That, that's unfortunate for him. But still, I, the only thing that scares you, right, is Vikings on the road. Cousins kind of sucks up the joint. No, I'm not really worried about it too much. I 
like I said at the beginning of the show, I think Minnesota Minnesota's pretty good. I mean, they're one of the better teams in the NFL right now. And I mean, with Jefferson, anything's possible. And that dude is great. Yeah, he's, he's so sick. Good. He's so good. Their defense scares me, though. It's just their defense is so bad. You know, who knows if this uh, third stringer, I don't even know, what's the third stringer's name? They kept talking about it all, all, you know, all week, and I, I can't even remember what the hell the guy's name is. The third string quarterback? Yeah, for the Dolphins, the guy that's playing. He's starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Schmo. Yeah, well, whatever. Joe Schmo. So, uh, you know, who knows? Joe Schmo has a game, and because the, you know, Viking defense is so bad, Hill and Waddle go off a little bit. But I don't know. It, it didn't scare me enough to pick them. Uh, just something I was looking at. But Vikings for both Eggy brothers there. The Rams are going to be hosting the Panthers. So the Panthers fire everybody. Well, they don't fire everybody. They they get rid of Matt Rule, uh, you know, first and foremost. They ended up, uh, what, they elevated the defensive coordinator, Wilkes, right? They put him up there even though he was terrible in, in Arizona. And then, Yeah, it's, they're, they're, I mean, dude, they're going to have to rebuild. That team is not good. Yeah, it's done. And then uh, they got uh, they got my my man uh, McAdoo at uh, offense, which has not done anything. Oh, well, it's so, not his fault. I mean, that it's whole, not his fault. The team's no good. But anyway, here here's a question: ten point underdogs here in Los Angeles against a Rams team that looks horrific. You see this all the time. The coach gets fired, and the next week the team plays out of their mind. And you have P.J. Uh, Walker. They're not. They're not. <laughs> no, I'm picking the Panthers. No. Oh, you're crazy. I, the Rams are still really good. The ticket tickets are with me heftily at 69%, but I don't care about the tickets because the public sucks. But the money, baby, 94% of the cash is in on the Panthers. So Go ahead. Go ahead and put your money on uh, P.J. Walker and uh, – Old Christian McCaffrey. P.J. Walker of XFL fame, baby. Yeah, the XFL. First gig I, first real gig I got out of college working for the XFL. The old New York, New Jersey hitmen. So I'll cheer for anybody out of the XFL. P.J. Walker. If among you're them. playing, if you're playing fantasy football, start D.J. Moore because he's just going to be peppered with targets. Well, you never know. It, it can't be any worse. Uh, he was one of my starters. He's sat on the bench for two or three weeks in a row now because it's been so terrible with Baker Mayfield. Oh, no. He got you got to start him. He's well, going to go off. Uh, let's go off to the next game. Seahawks hosting the Cardinals. Yet another home dog here. Card, uh, Cardinals favored by two and a half on the road. Sharps like the Seahawks. The tickets are kind of split, and then the money's kind of split too. So there's no real good vibe on this game. Everybody loved the Seahawks, you know, last week, and they got, you know, uh, pie in their face as the Seahawks tanked to the uh, Saints there in the end. Did you see the last Taysom Hill run that gave them the touchdown? The defensive back who just refused to tackle him and instead spent like seven yards trying to punch the ball out? What it was like, dude? Just no, tackle him, I bring him out of bounds. It. What? What are you doing? Why are you gonna give him? He's like, oh, no. If I can't get the, if I can't get the turnover, you know, that's it. I'm like, okay, that's one way to play, I guess. But he's anyway, just he's just gonna. That dude's gonna fall apart by the end of the year. Taysom Hill. Uh, maybe I, you know, it's Taysom Hill. I, I didn't understand him two, three years ago. I still don't understand him now. Whatever. It's like he pops up in the stat chart, and then a couple of people pick him up as a you know tight end because he gets rushes and all that in fantasy, and then you just don't hear from him anymore because it's fucking Taysom Hill. Um, no, he's like a th- he's a thirty two year old bulldozer. Yeah, it's it's stupid. It, it, it I guess it's like what Tim Tebow could have been, right? You know, best case scenario right. could have been. It's exactly Hill. like Tim Tebow's pissed right now because he could have done that. Well, he gave it a shot, but he wanted to be quarterback, and and look at you now. Uh, he's fine. What am I saying? Look at him now. He's he's completely fine. They're way better than me. Cardinals, are you going to take them or what? Short short dog for the team that's, I don't know, some people might say they're better. Some people might say they're at least a little, they're a trendy pick right now. Offense picking up a little bit. Not no, thanks to Kingsbury. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the Seahawks. I, I, although I do believe better days are ahead for the Cardinals. I think once Hopkins gets back next week, I think they're a totally different team. Yeah, but I think Hopkins Connor's, is going to be a welcome addition. Yeah, he is, 100%. Um, 
Uh, Connor's banged up. I don't even know if he's going to play this week. I don't know, but That's I picked him up off waivers anyway because I thought, why? You know, I mean, why would you not? Pick I him saw. Up? Yeah. Yeah, I saw. I don't even know why. I, I don't even know who dropped him, but I mean, worth, uh, worthwhile sitting on. He's way better than any other running backs in the in the waiver pool right now. Yeah, yeah. I I'm gonna go with the Seahawks, although so am I. This Over- isn't it. This this isn't a game I'm gonna lay any money on. I you know. No, and you want to talk about opposite ends of the spectrum. The Rams-Panthers game that we just talked about, I forgot, 41 was over-under there, so not expecting any points. But here, it's the number one point total on the board, 50.5 points in this game. They're expecting no defense, all offense. Which makes sense. I mean, neither defense is good. They're horrible. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's just, again, you look at the numbers, and it's been all unders. It's, it's just been an Gino under year. Smith. 50, 50 and a half points for a game featuring Geno Smith. By the way, do you want to know the number one offensive team in the NFL, DVOA? Well, you should uh, know. Why would I say it? Yeah, it's the Seahawks. That's stupid. Uh, do you want to know who it is? Well, why would you mention it right now? That's Asshole? how stupid. That's how stupid your your ratings. Those ratings are <laughs> rankings, ratings, whatever. Are uh, you going to go by yardage? You're going to go by yardage. Yeah, no, it, I'm going to go by my eye. My, my eye test tells me the Buffalo Bills are the best offense in the league. All right. Well, we talked about the Bills, and they're the next game on the schedule, and then it's the Eagles. So let's skip over to Monday Night Football, where we have the Chargers Broncos ending the week in a shit game. I mean, who wants to see either of these teams? Broncos are done. They're, they hired a terrible coach. They just gave 200 plus million to a terrible quarterback. Guy way past his prime. And then you get the Chargers, who have a coach who their number one receiver who hasn't played in four weeks is openly criticizing on Twitter during the game. I mean, you can't make this shit up. Keenan uh, Allen just writing, what the fuck are we doing? I don't know, Keenan. I don't know. Did you see that or no? Or am I talking about something you have no clue what I'm talking about? I have no clue what you're talking no, about. All right, go look it up. We're not bringing it up here, but Keenan Allen was shitting on uh, Staley for. Uh, oh, I did. I saw the tweet. It came across uh, uh, one of my uh, uh, social media links that I was using, and I saw it said something like, "What are we doing?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the, he didn't punt. He didn't punt. He went for it instead, and then I know the ball he's over, so like, stupid. Right around- you really hate the Chargers. Uh, you know what? I have shit on Staley now for about two years because he makes these. I mean, he's only been the coach for two years, right? This is year two. Um, I I just don't think they're a good team. And you know, you you watch them and you say, okay, what makes this team good? They have a quarterback who has a great arm and shows you moments of brilliance from time to time. And then after that, what do you have? You know, your number one wide receiver hasn't played all year. Your defense is all super banged up. I, 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 what good performance have you got? You know, Eckler ran off for, what, 175 yards last week, which definitely helped them get the win. But, you know, then you got a coach who is this uh, fucking stat nerd, which it's like fine when it works. I mean, there are people that do data analytics really well, and there are people that don't. And I think that this guy doesn't do it. I think he outthinks himself all the time. You know, I, I think Baltimore does stats the best. I, I, I think th- their data analytics blow everybody out of the water. And I know when people crapped on Harbaugh for, you know, going for it two weeks ago instead of kicking the field goal and going for it, I, I think that their logic behind their play calling and use of analytics works. This, I, no dice for me with Los Angeles. I just see mistake, mistake, mistake. You like them, huh? I just think that their offense is very, very good. I mean, I think they have the pieces in place to take down almost anybody in the AFC. Uh, for sure. I mean, I I picked them here. I, they're going up against the Broncos. Who like are they just were my best. They were my shit. best bet a couple weeks ago, and I have no idea what happened to them against the the Jaguars. I I can't. Well, that was the game. That was the game after. Uh, yeah, what's his Herbert, face? Herbert hurt. hurt his hurt his ribs. He probably shouldn't even play right. that game. Right. 
But that was the game after that was when the Jaguars got the seven-point f- favorite, right? I mean, I forgot who they played in between uh, the Chargers and last week they lost to the Texans, whoever they played in the middle. I think they were like seven-point favorite or some shit. But the Char- yeah, they... Chargers here are five-point favorites. So, I mean, if you like yeah, them, I lo- you think the I love... that good, you love them here. I love them. I love them. They're one of my super picks. They're one of your super picks. Did I put them in as my super pick? I don't think I did. I did not. Um, the tickets love the Chargers, 68%. This is a Monday night game, so the numbers don't really stick that well. But right now, the, the money's on the – money and the Sharps are leaning toward the Broncos. The tickets are leaning toward the Chargers. I'm with you, Chris. I, I think the Chargers win this game. I, I just – Denver shot. Denver shot. And Denver's it, really – Russell Wilson, man, are they regretting that now. I mean, give them that money. Like, I mean, you had to give them the money, right? That was part of the deal. But God, uh, I mean, he just. Looks I hope there's an out. Like, they better. They better have no an out. out. There's no out. There's no out. They're stuck with him. That's it. Now, did did he or did he not have surgery this week? No. He was. Uh, let's see. Bronco. On his shoulder? No. No way. There's, they're not going to get arthroscopic surgery and then practice the next step. Plenty of heat, blah, blah, blah. questionable customer response. Muscle injury to his latissimus dorsi in his back. His lat. Near his right shoulder in the second quarter. Feeling better, getting better every day. Hadn't had this particular thing before, but I'll be okay. I'll be ready. And, of course, Hackett turns around. He definitely looked good. Russ has played in the league for a long time. All players have different things that they have to deal with. Uh, I'm not going to do any more coach talk. So, anyway, we're both in the Chargers there. And that'll do it for the games. I mean, again, eight home dogs this week. I mean, it's crazy. There's been multiple weeks with, like, six to eight home dogs. I, I mean, what is home field anymore? I mean, it nothing. It's just nothing. And then, uh, you know, I, I mean, but didn't stop you. You picked, uh, what, you picked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine favorites. Nine favorites and only a couple of dogs. So, and I was definitely the other way. So you might have me here, but let's see if you have me where it counts. Oh, damn it! It's yeah, yeah. It's the wrong one. What was that? That was the ESPN uh, bed. I got all the I got the all the beds there. ESPN, ESPN one, ESPN two. Oh, that sounded like the beginning to uh, to Tech Mobile. No, 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 no. Wait, uh, go back to ESPN One. The first one I played. These are all oh, the ones no, from the old prime time. It's from uh, what is it NFL Blitz? I don't remember. It's from a video game. It sounds blitzy. But anyway, uh, I, fuck it. I am not cutting and chopping this up. We are just going with it. Let's just go to fourth down. So where the hell did I put fourth down? Where's that? There it is. Fourth down. Thank you, Christ. You try to make it sound professional, and then ultimately you're just like, fuck it. Let's do it. So we're down to the bet section. Uh, I gave you my best bet. It was the Bengals. Lock that sucker in. Uh, you gave your best bet. What was it again? I forgot already. The 49ers. Ah, that's right. The 49ers. Lock that in for you. And say, what'd you do for your super picks then? 49ers got to be in there, I'm sure, because that's one of your locks. Nope. I don't like, I don't like to, I don't like to best bet and lock. I oh, don't. I, I like, I like to separate so I don't lose. Sir Hedge. Double. Continue on, Sir Hedge. Sir Hedge. There you go. Uh, Packers, Bengals, Pats, Vikings, Chargers. Uh, so Green Bay, the Bengals, the Pats, the Chargers, and what was the last one that I missed? The Vikings. The Vikings. So, actually, I have a little bit the same as you. You liked Minnesota, as did I. You liked Green Bay, as did I. Uh, you liked the Bengals, as did I. And then I threw in Baltimore and Jacksonville, and that's where we differed. So, you went with the Pats and the Chargers. I went with Baltimore and Jacksonville. So, but we got three of the same. So, you know, great minds think alike unless they're shitty minds, and then they also think alike. So, parlays, uh, what'd you do for the parlays? Did you use any of that super contest stuff, or are you just going to go off yeah. on your own? Yeah, 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 no. I used my, I used two of those and my best bet. So, I used the 49ers as my uh, best bet. 49ers are back. The Packers, minus seven and a half, and the Chargers, 
earlier today it was four and a half, so I that's what I wrote down. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I just I looked at four teams to throw into some kind of parlay, and that was Cincinnati, Baltimore, Jacksonville, and Green Bay. And I didn't know what ultimately to do. At one point, I liked all one of each one of these four teams differently, and then ultimately, I said, you know what, I'm just going to do a two teamer. I, you know, I, I'm trying to get on the board here with these picks, but Cincinnati and Baltimore. I just think Baltimore is going to have their way with New York. And again, Cincinnati's only getting a couple of points. And unless every you know expert under the sun that's picked the Saints here is right, and uh, you know, I, I don't know, Cincinnati to me, I think is the better team, has the better quarterback. I, defense is suspect. They are on the road too, but I mean, the Saints haven't shown me anything really to make me think that they could they should win against the Bengals. Not that the Bengals have either, but so I just did the Cincinnati and Baltimore as a two team parlay, and that was my pick. So that brings to the teaser. Now, I know the teaser is going to end up being similar to the two of us. So why don't you go and give your legs for your teasers? We talked about a couple of them already. Yeah, well, I, I those are uh, side teasers that we're, we'll talk about here in a minute. But uh, probably you're going to laugh, too, because I, I did four dogs after taking all the favorites. Well, no, because when you're talking I, about the teasers, it works different, right? So... Right, a hundred percent. So I, I took four dogs. I took the Bears, the Pats, the Chiefs, and the Cowboys. Uh, you took the Bears, the Pats, the Chiefs, and the Cowboys. Wow. So what was the so uh, everything over a touchdown? Everything over a touchdown. Wow. Okay, that's a different kind of teaser. I never would have thought. Uh, you would have done something like that. I did. I did your typical, you know, square bullshit tease. I, I took Green Bay and I brought their points down. I took Cleveland and I put. I brought their points down because the Cleveland tease swung them from a two and a half point favorite all the way to a three and a half point dog. So, you know, you get them all the way to a three point dog and can still win. So I did Green Bay, I did Cleveland, and then I did Baltimore just because I think Baltimore is going to win, and so I can just get the, rid of the points and bring that down to basically a pick 'em. And so that's yeah. what I did with mine. I like to, I try my best. I know one on one of the legs later uh, in my uh, uh, big teaser I did. I don't like to what they. I don't like to cross the line as they call it. You know where you go from minus three to plus three. I, I always like to stay above the line or below the line. Does yeah, that make sense? Yeah, I get it. But think about for the Browns, right? And and you you just don't like the Browns to begin with, so there's no way that you know I, I can no. Sell I you like on the it. Browns. I like the Browns. I just think they're I think they're going to run into a defense that showed last week that they can compete. Like they're they're good. New England's defense is better than whatever they're ranked. I know, but if you. Like, consider the Browns, two-and-a-half-point favorites. You throw that tease in that leg, and that swings all the way to three-and-a-half points. So a game that probably will be pretty close, I, the Browns have to lose by over four points. Yeah, you could win both ways. You yeah, might I mean, be able definitely to win both, win both ways. ways. So, uh, but that's where we differed. So we used Cleveland and New England in different ways. I went Green Bay, Cleveland, Baltimore. You went Bears, Pats, Chiefs, Dallas. So that leads to the prop bets. I'll tell you the ones I was looking at. You can tell me if you looked at any of these the same. Probably not because there's so many prop bets to look at. But I looked at Napoleon Harris over 44.5 yards. I looked at Aaron Rodgers over 241.5, which I think now is 240.5. Jefferson, uh, 89 and a half yards uh, receiving. And then Kenneth Walker, the third, uh, 59 and a half yards over in his starting role here now that Rashad Penny is out of every fantasy manager's minds, thankfully, especially if you drafted him and you hated him from day one. Now you don't have to worry about him. Um, but that, that's what I was looking at, and I'll tell you which one I picked after you go. Yeah, the Roger. I can't believe you picked the Rogers one too. That's that's the one that my top one. Yeah, right. Like over 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 two forty one. He's gonna he's gonna fucking hammer the Jets. I, I it's what I went. There's with. no way. Yeah, it's what I went with. I, I, the one other than that that I, I mean, all of those I like. I like Rogers. I like Jefferson, and I like Walker. 
You know, I yeah. mean, Walker had, I mean, they're going to give him the rock a ton this weekend. And Jefferson, that guy goes off for 150. And, he, you know, you just got to get over 90 with him. Uh, listen, I'll, I'm happy to see Jefferson get over 150. He, him and Josh Allen are carrying me in one of my fantasy leagues. Well, I'll bring this up later because it comes into play in terms of gambling. So we're, we both like Rodgers as the premier pick there out of the props. Yes. Did you yeah. did you look at any other props or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I looked at. Uh, well, well, I'll I'll tell you when we get to the end. Okay. Uh, I'm, I I bet a couple there. All right. Uh, look ahead lines. I you know I know last week you didn't look at at any. Um, I did you look at any this week? Because I did. I looked at the Jags and the Giants right now. The Jags are three point favorites versus the Giants, and it's in Jacksonville which I think if the Giants end up getting throttled and Jacksonville ends up winning, I you know, Jags were favored by seven points two weeks ago. So I definitely think the three could go up a little bit. Yeah, the, the Chiefs-Niners line is pretty good. I, I like the Niners getting points at home against the Chiefs. How much are they getting? It's probably like a two-point game? Yeah, two points. Two yep. points? Yeah. yeah I, you know, again, I got to see those two teams play. I don't know what to make of either of them. I, I now, probably, Baltimore, you know, Baltimore is probably going to hammer Cleveland too. That's at Baltimore. It's going to be a good game, but I mean, they're laying six. That's a touchdown. They could easily win by a touchdown. Yeah, I, I mean, I could see, I could see people jumping on the Atlanta seven and the Houston Texans seven too. Atlanta's playing Cincinnati in Cincinnati, underdogs by seven. Texans playing in uh, Las Vegas, and they're underdogs by seven as well. Those are uh, a couple of buy teams, right? Houston, Houston, and Raiders are both off coming off buy. Yeah. Yep. So, but anyway, but I like the Jags, New York, because I think if the Jags end up having a bounce back game here, and the Giants get you know beat up like I think they will, I think that line might go up. But you're liking San Francisco at home by one and a half. You think it's going to go more towards San Fran? Uh, I do, I do. I think it's going to probably. Uh, go closer to even after this week. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I, San Francisco is very good. I like I said numerous times in the show. I, I they're a, a very strong contender to make the uh, NFC Championship game. All right. Well, let's wrap it up because I'm getting up against the clock here. I got to go for. Uh, I got to go to Guardian Angel Church for Mason's uh, introduction to Mason's uh, whatever he's getting his first Holy Communion. So I got to do that. And I got to nice. bounce here in a short bit. So let's uh, do our bets. Fire away, sir. What do you got? I'm at 8,100. I lost everything last week. I lost a cool thousand and knocked me down from 92. And it was, I, I mean, there, I didn't do anything right last week. So I could go yeah. through everything that I screwed up. But I mean, literally, it was everything. Chiefs, no good. At, Philly, yeah. no good. Baltimore, no good. I mean, it was like, ugh. I'm not far ahead. Of, I mean, I'm at 82.95. So it's not like I'm that much ahead of you here. I mean, oh, um, two thousand down right out of the gate. Five weeks into the season, it's fucking terrible. Yeah, so I, I'm gonna get some. I I believe I'm gonna get some of it back here. So my uh, starting at the top, my straight bets. I'm gonna do money line two fifty on the Vikings. It's only gonna cash out a, a, a couple hundred, but you know, it, I think they're gonna win and. We'll knock out that field goal, so all they got to do is win somehow, some way yep. over the Dolphins. And I, um, I don't. Two is not playing. Uh, even if Bridgewater plays, I, I don't care. The Vikings are going to win that game. Um, and then using the spread, I'm going to use my best bet, and I'm using the 49ers minus five and a half. Bet two fifty on that as well. So hopefully, I can cash out five hundred there. Then moving on to my parlays, I'm going to do a money line parlay. Okay. With with the Ravens, the Chiefs, the Cowboys, and the Chargers. Uh, all right. So you're looking at Kansas City to win at home, and then Dallas to win on the road. Those would be the big yep. the big two ones there. And so then, well, the Chiefs don't really do much for me, but the Cowboys really jack. Well, the Cowboys up. do, yeah. That that's the one, and then the rest are you know favorites or or short dogs. Yeah, so that's a hundred to win fourteen hundred. That'd be great. No, that's actually not. Uh, I, I yeah, I picked all those teams. 
Uh, not not yeah, moneyline to win, the, though. Not moneyline to win, but yeah, you know the Chiefs is whatever. The Chiefs could easily win, but the Cowboys is going to be the tough one. They're going to need they're going to need to show up for that game. Um, and though, so then for my uh, teasers, I use those same four teams, and I brought Ravens pick them, Chiefs plus eight and a half, Cowboys plus twelve and a half, and the Chargers. Uh, all the way down to uh, our, I'll cross the line and we'll go to plus one. Okay. And then for a second teaser, that was for a hundred bucks. Okay. And then for my other teaser, I did the Packers down to one and a half, the Bucks down to two, the Niners down to a pick them and the Bengals crossing the line to get four. So even if they lose by a field goal, I'm still covering all right, and then a hundred on that probably. Yeah, hundred on that too. And then for my prop bets, which I love every week, these are my favorite. Uh, I got Roger fifty bucks on all these to win a hundred. Got Rogers over two forty one passing. Yeah. I got Pollard rushing and receiving combined over forty eight and a half which I think is a joke. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is a funky line. I would imagine that. Well, I guess they're thinking that the Phillies' defense is going to be big. Yeah. Yeah, but I I don't think this is a Zeke game. I think this is more of a Pollard game. Uh, And since nobody in Matrix listens to our podcast, I also put in a waiver claim for Pollard, by the way. Oh, I didn't know somebody cut him. That's stupid. For... Yeah, it was stupid for Icarus. So I, I put a claim in for him. I made some moves. You need to check them out later on. But uh, I put a claim in for him. Uh, and then I got I, – my final bet is Ayuk receiving yards oh. over 45 and a half. What a stink fest that guy's been. He's been their leading receiver. I mean, yeah, but his numbers suck. I mean, people they're are talking- over 50, they're over. He's over 50 yards a week. I know, but people were talking about him like he was going to be a hundred yards a week, right? I, I mean, know. Oh no, he's he's been sting fest compared to what he was uh, two years ago today, right? Yeah, like his the end of his rookie season, he's never even come close to that again. He's also hasn't been targeted the way he was that year. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, so far this year, you know, going from most recent backwards, fifty eight yards, thirty seven yards, thirty nine yards, sixty three yards, forty yards. So you're going 45 and a half here. Okay. And so that's your final prop bet? Yeah, that's my final prop. Okay. Um, So this is what I did. I only have a couple of bets because I'm shook. I just, I I haven't been able to get this thing moving. And I took a big swing last week and it blew up in my face. And this same shit happened to me last year. And I, I didn't. You know, I never was able to put the genie back in the bottle. But I did one parlay. I took Cincinnati and Baltimore, like I was talking up top. I took those. I put a hundred bucks on that. That's for three seventy two. I took the tees that I talked about: Green Bay, Cleveland, Baltimore. I put three hundred on that. So that was my big bet of the week. That's three hundred for seven seven eighty. That's Green Bay uh, giving one. Cleveland or Green Bay getting what a minus one. Cleveland then getting uh, whatever it is, getting three and a half, and then Baltimore turning you know almost to a pick, and so then after that I did one fun bet, I did the Rogers over two forty one, I did the Jefferson over eighty nine and a half, and I did the Walker over fifty nine and a half, and I put that in a tease, a hundred bucks for six forty, so those are the three things I did, and that was it, and then I just called it, I said that's five hundred bucks. You know, and if I, if I don't turn around that, I got to go back to the drawing board here and, and go back to a different way of, of doing my bets here because, you know, we're going backwards, not forwards, and that's not a good thing. You, you plateaued a little bit after you took a rough early on, but, I mean, last week was just a swing and a miss, and I couldn't believe I missed everything. Everything. Fucking everything. Yeah. Although I would have hit big. I haven't, I haven't hit a, I haven't hit a money line parlay. That's been my biggest thing, man. I, I hit numerous p- money line parlays over the past couple of years, every year, and I just, I, I haven't hit. One. But when you hit one, you then get back to even or back over, and then it's just playing with house money, like we, like I've always been doing. So I got, I got to catch back up. Right. Well, Seattle did me in last week because Seattle, uh, had they won, that would have netted me my money line parlay, and that was a hundred for nine thirty eight. So that would have been a huge swing. Yeah. But, 
Anyway, yeah. so that wraps it up for week six, and then we will return next week. Actually, I might end up doing a Sunday one just to update all the lines. I haven't done that all year because we've been doing these on Saturdays with the crazy schedules we have. But until then, Chris, all the best. I'll talk to you this weekend. Tell the family I said hello and enjoy all that sunny weather as we just got crap up here in uh, Jersey. So we had to throw in some weather before it was all said and done. That's how we do. <laughs> all right. Adios. All right. Peace out, brother. See you, everybody. Till next week.